17th of Men's Tears in the Year of Our Lady, 1537. Hey, diary. Our trip to Cocklebottom to see Copa the Selkie went pretty well. We got the ritual we needed after all, and her wife was a delight. But Squirm was very prickly and evasive. More so than usual, I should add. And Copa seemed to think that Squirm had hurt people in the past. I've tried to respect Squirm's privacy and not ask her about being kicked out of the Gloamlight Realm, but now it's got to the point that I'm not sure that getting her powers back is the best idea. I need the whole story. I tried to ask her as soon as we got back home, but she very ostentatiously started getting ready for bed, ignoring all my questions. She then started snoring very loudly, I'm positive she was just faking to get me off her back. I was pretty tired, though, so I didn't try to push the matter further, but as soon as she wakes up today, I'm going to make her tell me everything. She needs me to do this ritual, so I can use that. I'm not a persuasive person. I was terrible at debating at school, but this is too important for me to back down. Fuck it. I'll wake her up now. It's nearly lunchtime, for goodness sake. Wake up, Squirm. Come on. Wake up. You can't avoid this forever. Uh, fine, Silda. <laughs> Just give me a moment. No, I won't, actually. You you owe me some answers. No, I don't. It's my life, not yours. So get your nose out of my fucking business. Copa said you hurt people. I'm not going to take you to Enlace Mountain until I know why. Not you too. Having that bloody seal woman go on and on at me about responsibility was bad enough. This is a headache I really don't need right now. Oh, but I think you do. Copa was right. If you're going to be getting power, we need to know how you'll use it. I promised her, all right. I promised that I'd be a good little girl and eat all my greens, so just get off my back. But... I don't believe you. I don't think you'll keep that promise. If you're hiding your past from me, what else are you hiding? Hmm? We're so close, Silda. We're so close to getting my powers back. Can't we just go and do the ritual? Can't we just finish this? Why do we need all this fucking introspection? Because I don't want to be the reason you can start hurting people again. Okay. I see you're not going to drop this. Fine. I'll tell... Greetings, gentlewoman. How are you both this fine morning? Phew, saved by the bell. Wait a minute. Who the fuck is this? I second that question. Who the fuck are you? My name is Chance, and my face is the last thing you will ever lay eyes upon. Uh, okay, so I'm guessing you're after the Eye of Aegnerhald? Why, yes, I am. This is a smart one, I see. Now, you have two choices. Either you give me the eye, and then I kill you, or I kill you, and then I find the eye myself. I personally would much rather you take the first option. Rooting around in a lady's bedchamber is not really my style. Okay, that makes sense. Is there any scenario in which you won't kill us, maybe? No. My apologies, my lady. I have very strict orders from my bushy-tailed benefactor to kill you both, whether you cooperate or not. Ah, so you work for the Trove. Makes sense. I do indeed. He wanted you to know that he was the one to order your grisly deaths. He seemed to take a lot of pleasure from thought. Of course he did. Sick bastard. Now, I must hurry you, my lady. I'm getting a little impatient. Bring me the eye, if you please. Yes, yes, of course. It's just under here. Ah, the floorboards. How quaint. Okay, here it is. I'll... Ah, pardon me, ladies, but it appears I also have a similar mission to complete. 
I'm afraid this puts us in a rather awkward position, Mr. Chads. Not as awkward as that time we bumped into each other in Votun, if I remember correctly. Nevertheless, it is quite delightful to see you again, sir. You know this guy? Who is this plonker? Judging by his evil civil servant vibes, I'm guessing he's from the Bureau? I'm known as Halen. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I am indeed from the Bureau of Magical Affairs. They prefer that we remain discreet, but as you will all be dead in a few minutes, it doesn't really matter whether you know the identity of my employers. Um, hey, excuse me? Are you including me on your death list? Because the Assassin's Code clearly states that... Uh, I'm afraid that is not the case. If we were both hired only to kill these targets, then we would be forbidden from harming each other. But, you see, I also seek the Eye of Egnerhald. So this puts us in direct competition, which means the protections put in place by the Assassin's Code do not apply in this instance. Therefore, I must ask you to face me in an honourable duel for the Eye. Very well. It would be my pleasure to best you in a duel, old friend. Don't be so cocky, sir. You haven't yet faced my prowess with firearms. Your fancy newfangled toys can't help you, Halen. My daggers will find their rightful place in your heart soon enough. Stop sassing each other and fight, God damn it! All this jabbering is giving me a migraine. Very well. The target has a point. Let us begin. <laughs> Should we do something? We should just what? sit back and watch. Either one of them kills the other, or they both kill each other. Whatever happens, we're quids in. Oh, God. Yeah, that's not as comforting as you might think. Ah! That was a dirty move. Halen, I expected more from you. You shall taste my blade again before long. Are they flirting? I think ah, they're flirting. Ooh, just really? Ooh. Are you sure? You don't read as many romance novels as I do without being able to recognize the signs. Now we mention it, neither of them are aiming for the vital organs. I think you might be right. Of course, that's the thing you notice. Don't move a muscle, or I will blow your brains out. Ah, I see you haven't noticed the dagger poised by your jugular. It appears we have reached a stalemate. Yes, it appears we have. Kiss, you damn fools! Squirm? What? We were all thinking it. I was certainly thinking it. I've been thinking about it for some time, in fact. What about you, Halen? I... I didn't think you felt that way about me, Chance. You seem so... outgoing with everyone. I never dreamt. I have felt that way since Futun, Halen. And I think you have, too. I... I believe you are correct in your assertion, Mr. Chance. Enough of this faffing about. Just ask him on a date and be done with it. The little lady is right, Helen. Would you do me the honour of accompanying me to the Peacock's Feather for a fine beverage? I would, sir. I would indeed. Excellent. Now that that's sorted, are you prepared to lower your weapon? I am, if you are. On the count of three. One, two... Three. Marvellous. But this does leave the small matter of the targets and the eye. Yes, this is rather a predicament. I'd really rather that you didn't kill us, but then I am somewhat biased. I am quite fond of being alive. I agree. Well, I'm sure we can come to some sort of an arrangement. You did set us up on our little date, after all. Do your employers need some kind of proof that we've been killed? The Bureau asked that I bring them a lock of hair from each of you. And the trove wanted vials of your blood. Creepy, but okay. We can give you those things. But which of us shall take the eye? I... I don't know. How about this? Chance takes the eye to the trove then steals it off him again when he's not looking, so Halen can take it to the Bureau. To be honest, it's probably safer with the government knuckleheads than the power-hungry squirrel, though it is a toss-up. I am comfortable with this plan. What say you, Chance? Makes no odds to me whether the trover of the Bureau has the eye. If I get paid, which I surely will be, then I'm happy. Plus a little extra skullduggery on the side is always fun. Or... Since the trope is so incompetent, you could give him a replica, and he'd never know the difference. You probably have forgery contacts, right? 
I do, in fact. One of my more talented friends owes me a favor. This would be an excellent opportunity to collect on that. This seems like a good plan to me. I am willing to do as you say. Any good assassin knows when it is advantageous to stay their weapon. Unnecessary bloodshed is rather vulgar. Excellent. So it is settled. Though I do reserve the right to ask you fine ladies for a favour in the future. It's always good to have a wide network of contacts, wouldn't you say? Yes, I agree, Mr. Chance. All right, I'm cool with that. You two seem like stand-up guys, even though you did try to kill us. Thank you. You are too kind. Ah, the sun is over the yard arm. Helen, would you accompany me to the peacock's feather for a drink? It would be my pleasure. Of course, my good sir. Let's go right this minute. Goodbye, former targets. May you succeed in all your endeavours. Farewell, sweet ladies. Bye, guys. Have a nice date. Cheerio. So, Squirm, now that's out of the way, tell me everything. Now. All right, I'll tell you. You have been listening to the Brick Willow Papers, Episode 9, Dagger and Pistol. This show is a snazzy tapir production. It was written and produced by Maddie Searle and performed by Maddie Searle, Lewis Robertson and David Devereaux with additional recording by David Devereaux. If you'd like to support the Brick Willow Papers, follow the links in the show notes to find out more about our Patreon campaign, our coffee page and our merch on TeePublic. We hope you join us again soon.